the the preceding week, um, and this here comes the uh, the violins. The preceding week was a difficult one, um, but I thought, well, at least there'll be a, probably be a good election result, and I'll feel happy about things that didn't quite work that, <laughs> yes, out that way either. <laughs> um, but I had a I had this I was doing the album release getting Christchurch the night before. Yeah. On the Thursday night. Yeah. And um, the, the the Ducks Deluxe was the new the iconic Ducks. venue of Christchurch. It was called the Ducks Live, and yeah. it was due to open on November the 11th, and we were playing it. And that was the album launch, and then that got pushed back to November 17, and we were opening it. It was a grand launch. Oh well, album coming out, yeah, big party, and then that didn't quite happen. The council said, "Oh, we can't quite do it." In November 17, you can't quite sign everything off. You know? oh. So, okay, we could move to November 24, Thursday, mm. but we had to be in Auckland the next morning. That meant the they ducks bought our flights again and all mm. sort of stuff, and we would fly up the next morning, and then we would have one morning of rehearsing with our new drummer because the other drummer, my other drummer in Christchurch, took off to Canada on a different tour. Yeah, and so um, so we had this, we had to play the release gig in Christchurch, and I, and this so this would be all cool. This, this so this could work out. This would be fine. It's just touring. That's all right. Yeah, and so um, got it all ready to go. And then on uh, on the weekend, I was down the weekend before last weekend, I was down in uh, Dunedin playing Chicks and over in Queenstown, and um, I heard during the weekend I got a phone call from the Ducks to say, for some unbelievable reason, the council had decided once again not to let them open, but they, this time they waited for all the, uh, you know, two million posters to be out on the street, right. all, all the gig guys and everything to be done. So then we had like four days from Monday morning to find a new venue to uh, re try and do all the marketing again and try and let as many people know mm. that, that it was on at a new venue. And, um, and then my week was... Uh, Severely compromised. Oh, man, and, uh, the council, what a handbrake. Man, uh, so someone, anyway, someone's going to make, well, I was supposed to make a piñata or Bob Parker for us to smash to pieces <laughs> on the night. And the yeah. council was very unpopular, which I think is why National's done as well as they have in, in, in Christchurch, is because people, there's this r- rumour that they that they will fire the entire council. Right. And, that, and a lot of people have gone, well, pff, surely anything would be better than the council. And I'm not so sure, but... Um, it feels like that when you're caught in the middle of it. Because nothing to do with me. I didn't do it. I didn't nothing to do with my gig. My gig just kept getting bounced around till but eventually. That, that wouldn't be the first council that the National has disbanded in, in the Canterbury region. No, they region, did that to though, the right? environment, yeah. Canterbury. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. More dubious, selfish reasons. But the, yeah. but it still meant that it was just a, a crazy, stressful week of trying to have no sleep and trying to make that gig happen. Uh-huh. By the time I arrived here on Friday, I'd, by the time we played, we rocked it out. But I, I kind of sounded like um, I sounded like you know. I don't know, Jimmy Barnes. No, that was good times. <laughs> and I think I was also, I'd had a couple of whiskeys, and I think my banter was probably um, no, you was know, maybe good. inappropriate for a great <laughs> opportunity sorry to everyone that was there. Great opportunity to hear, finally hear some of these songs that have been long time coming, really. It's been a, it's been ages that this album has sort of been Yeah, it is. Simmering. And it's, and it's, it is. That's the other thing that makes it hard to control yourself. When you're so stoked to finally have your album done, and you go to the album release gig, and you, 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 know, you want to... Um, you know, you really want to kind of represent it well, but at the same time, you're desperate to have a party because you finally got it finished. Um, so the, this album, yeah, it was supposed to come out in February this year. So we went down to Littleton to record a, uh, to do a music video, some funding for that. So we went back down to Littleton, um, and uh, and we were there for the February earthquake. Yeah. And, uh, and then suddenly... I think you were filming the, well, you were in the process of getting yeah, the, the we were, filming organised? Yeah, well, the, 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 the video was completely wrecked out. went down two weeks before, uh, like the first week of February, so... We Ricky did the whole thing out, got it all sorted, extras, the whole lot was ready to film on the 26th. Wow. And starting on, I think, Friday the 26th, it was to be shot in the Littleton Hotel, maybe yeah. Friday the 25th it might have been. Um, and uh, and I was so excited about this. We had quite a good kind of, quite a good video concept. And then um, the, the Littleton Hotel on the waterfront, uh, Norwich Quay in Littleton, um, collapsed. And, um, and but, that but, was... but the original plan was to, to, to do that um, filming and then you were going to bounce back up to Auckland and carry yeah. on with the momentum of what was going on up here already. And yeah, that was the plan. Yeah. The album. Yeah. And those plans just all kind of disappear. And, and you know, there's, there's a, everything becomes very simple after that. You're, mm. you're certainly not thinking about making videos and releasing albums and you've got friends who are... Um, you know, who's who's who are not who are really really unwell. Like when I unwell, I mean, you know, I mean, a friend who nearly died, and he was in hospital, and then he came out, and then I had to do some caregiving because I didn't have a family to look after myself. You know, yeah. so I found myself, and suddenly, like it suddenly, it's like you and me, right? One of my best mates has got really got got really um, messed up in the quake, and so I had to um suddenly, uh, you know, you're doing all the cooking the custard and bananas and stuff, and you're yeah. doing that that kind of, you know, and that's. Yeah. And, the, and and those things become hugely more important than putting out albums and stuff. Definitely, yeah. And I'm um, just helping friends clean up their houses, and that goes on for a few months, and you just, just don't think about anything else. And then finally, you know, we got into doing the Harbour Union stuff, and um, 
and I just thought that would be would make an album we'd put out do a couple of gigs and and but it took on a kind of a life of its own really mm. um and ended up touring that all around the country and suddenly it's like September you know and uh, and uh things have started to settle down a bit or at least we've found a, a new way of a new reality or a new way of life um down in Christchurch and you know slowly but um surely the 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 um aftershocks became a little further apart and people started to get a little less tired because everyone's just so tired bro. yeah and it's a whole tiredness it's like that you know i suppose young parents can understand yeah and the entire population feels like young parents down there you know and um and so then i got i thought right okay the harbour union thing got me just kicked my ass back into touring and remembering how much i love playing to people and um and so then i just then i started getting back into putting my own album out Suddenly, the album t- title "Hope Holiday," which was kicking around for a while, seemed quite appropriate because mm. that's what we were really having. Uh, um, and uh, and so, like, you know, a friend of mine gave me a, a cover painting to use. It's, it all it's all ended up where it really, really, you know, really if, you don't, nice, if you don't rush things out, it's funny how things get yeah. a little bit of space and they just fall into line. Because, you know, because you know, originally the the picture on the back of the album was going to be the front of the album. Yeah, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, and and this whole process started off with a, a bunch of demos that nearly got released called Vaseline on the Lens using mm. that cover, and that was that was just demos that were kind of like you know finished demos, and they were kind of there were good bits of them. They were kind of rugged. They probably wouldn't have done, certainly wouldn't have. Um, you know, probably been able to go on the radio so much or something because they were they were pretty just rough mm. kind of things, and and that's right. That's where I thought I was heading, but then, you know, we ended up getting some funding from CNZ and um, an arts patron, and that, and actually being able to make this album properly with like Joel Mulholland, the Mots, Andrew Cogan, um, Brett Adams, and the Bads, and 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 the uh, and Victoria, um, Girling Butcher, who's just also put out her album on the same night as yeah. mine, <laughs> which was which was cool. We had those album releases together up there. And, Backbeat, and that was that was real cool. Well, soon soon we're going to give away some copies of the album, but yeah. um, I'll play something else now. Dr- uh, Drink like police. No, I don't play that one. No, I don't I play thinking, that one. Oh, actually, can, why don't I play a little bit of it on the guitar? Can I? Can oh I yeah, just, yeah. Can if I you want, play, I just want to play a live a bit of a live version of Drink like police. You, you might be uh, out of tune. On uh, let me see. It is cold moment. in here. Yeah. Oh no, that sounds all right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. See, but, or maybe halfway through it, you can go into the album version so you can see what it ends up being like. <laughs> So I go and, and Wayne Wayne Bell, Wayne Bell is uh, the guy I thank the most, um, helping me make this. He's the producer and the guy who plays the drums. And he, you know, anyone who knows Wayne will know that Wayne's worked on just about just about every album um, in New Zealand. He is, he's just he's just such a such a dude. And, um, leads from the couch, Wayne. This is for you. Hope oh, comes in waves like the tide. There will be days There'll be days when you swear Water was gone It vanished for good From here where we stood On this barren and lifeless horizon of mud But I won't take it out on the one that I love Cause hey girl, it's a crazy world Yeah, these are troubled times Mixed up money rhymes And hey love Yeah, we will make it through Oh, if we keep it true I oh, am yeah, when When the cold winds arrive Our overweight Love will survive and So let's sleep all day and we drink like police And don't cut your hair Or go anywhere Yeah, slowly but surely The days become longer The drums of distraction Pound a bit stronger With romantic notions Of ghost self-improvement Backsliding, wide-eyed, revivalist movement And hey, girl 
It's a crazy world All these are troubled times Mixed up money rhymes Hey love If we will rise above We will make it through Oh if we keep it true solo at the end there probably wouldn't work without the guitar but there you go nice a bit of how that song sounds like is an acoustic thing drink like police she is and by the time we finished recording that one um joel had found a cool little drum machine to use and uh and weird little noises and brett adams comes up with these crazy little guitar things and take those simple songs and turn them into um Something that, you know, just so much more interesting than what they would have been if I was left mm. to my own devices as I have been in the past. And I think, um, you know, that's the, the danger of the of the, the, the double-edged sword of that kind of DIY New Zealand attitude, which we hold so dear, you mm. know. Mm. So I, think we do, I think it's a disclaimer, though. I think an element of it is like, oh, it's not that great, but I did it myself. You know, in my bedroom, my own time. I didn't mm. have the clock of the studio going. And subsequently, you kind of end up in your in your room or in your little homemade studio, punishing yourself, flagellating yourself, trying to get things perfect, and yeah. putting layer upon layer of yourself. And when you finally work with a, a really cool group of people, like I wish you'd done this years ago. <laughs> does does that mean that over the next year, or you know, as 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 you play this album out live, you're more likely, or people are more likely to see you with the band than by yourself? I, I've got, I've got three combinations because you need to play as much as you can, and and it's all very well to think that you know you just play the kind of yeah, with the, with the band in the biggest shows, but it's really hard if you're not if you're not able to really pay the guys and they've got their own families and trying to um, align people's planets is real difficult. So, I've got this other um, lineup where the bass player Stefan plays all the electric guitar parts because he's a really good multi instrumentalist and he. So when we're together and we've played together for years, he does the, all the BVs and the electric guitar and the two of us are called Puff and Steph. Which is our someone called a step and puff the other night as well, <laughs> and that's just and that means we can get all the kind of it gives you much more of an idea than when it's just me solo. Mm. However, the more layers you add to a band, the less storytelling you can do. And and I really enjoy being able to go look. This song's about this, or you know, like uh, mm. you know, um, out of reach. There's this place called Waikuku Beach, and and it's about trying. You can get introduce people to the songs instead of just playing them by so that you know and, and as soon as you add a, a whole band there like maybe a bit happened the other night when i did promise the guys before i went on that i'd try and rope in talking yeah, yeah. and uh and i didn't rope in talking very much um it, it, it's it's sort of uh it's you know you lose something and you gain something else you play with the band you get to hear all the cool little other bits that are in the album but essentially they're still the same songs you play solo, you get to tell all the stories behind it, which you can't with the band. So, At the same time, the band needs to acknowledge that they're there for you. <laughs> you know, you're in charge. Yeah, but I think it gets a bit boring for them. So, I mean, I, I, the bigger the bigger shows we did the Rugby World Cup final was our first band gig with with Anika, and um and that was down in Christchurch there, and that was and that was a that was a good rock and show. And on a big show like that, it's much better to have a band behind you, you know, and mm. filling it up. But in a little like say down wine cellar or something. Then really, it's better if it's just you know just the duo sort of aspect of it, just me and Stefan, because you can kind of story tell and get some of the other you know get some of the other weird sounds, a bit of feedback going. You know, yeah. With that, I, that, that's my favourite lineup at the moment for little venues. It's me and Steph, and we did Dunedin and Queenstown like that, and it was that was real cool. And then with the band thing, I'm still getting used to it from the transition from being a solo musician to being in a band quite hard because I'm so excited when I do it that I just I jump around a bit like you know an idiot. And I don't really focus on being the world's best vocalist, <laughs> and I um and I just want everyone to have a party like I am. So yeah. like at at um Backbeat the other night, it was all cool, but there was quite a few industry people there, yeah. And they were watching, and I appreciated them being there, but I kind of wanted to run out like I'd seen Chris Knox do when I played with him in the past, and just push them all forward and go, just get over yourselves, have another drink, start talking, stop listening, yeah, so much, you know. I mean, you know, just and just kind of. And the, well, the owner of the venue talked to me afterwards and said, you guys are such a good 70s English pub rock band. And I thought, awesome. Is that what you... I think that's <laughs> really good, <laughs> isn't it? Okay, all right, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, um, and that we, so, n- n- But now that the product is out and it's... You know, and um, it's out and it's in all and, the stores. And it is, and, and, it's, it's, and, um, and it's really good and everything. Are you, are you a little bit more relaxed about how this one does? Or, you know, you're not, you're not so... 
uptight about um, about whether or not it does really awesome or it does okay. I'm or real uptight about. You are. I mean, there's been this. I, I besides the fact that this is this is cost a lot of my money yeah um to get it to this point to make it look nice to um to get the sound you know to get it to sound all legit enough that it, it could go on you know not just um you know it could go here and it could go um be it maybe and it could be r and z which is what my other albums have done you know my last album show pony but I kind of if, if it could get across the other couple of rooms across here to the rock <laughs> um i wouldn't mind because it rocks you know um or if i could go on the, i don't care i don't have a preference yeah. i certainly don't have any kind of ego that's attached to oh my god it's being played on what no yeah as many people as can hear it is is you know that's the, the goal because then they can decide whether they like it and that's the biggest challenge you face you know mm. it's just trying to give as many people a chance and my years of touring have you know have led me to kind of maybe foolishly believe that there's quite a lot of those people out there and, and like me maybe they um you know you've got a the worlds they're not always listening you know they're not always listening to radio and listening for new mm. music so you've mm. got to somehow find ways to get them so i've got plans I, i'll go off touring after christmas um once i get the bat this band tour or at least tour out of the way when still got some dates to go end of this year through december and then i'll go out by myself and just do little five dollar shows take the album i'll stop them in stores myself as well mm. like i get my own distribution thing besides it being with rhythm method and being in you know the warehouse and marbex and all that sort of stuff there's all you, there's no shop in picton geraldine anything like okay. that there's no record store so you take your own little thing stick it on the shelf like you do at the garage like five albums give them a copy and that's what experience you know? has told you right that's, yeah you, you've, actually, not, you've done been there done this and you yeah. know how to sell albums yeah and you, yeah. you've got you've got to get you've got to put them in front of people and you've also got to give the local paper a reason to write a wee story on yeah. you because that's how people find out mm. in their free local newspaper because half, you know some of my audience maybe half maybe less are on facebook you know and i can tell them that way um, although they get bombarded with that too. So trying to find other angles where people might read about something um, outside of the main centres um, where, you know, where, where we are inundated with it and, and actually go, oh, what, it's, it's at the bookstore in Geraldine, really? Mm. Or they just see it and they go, what is this? And it's, you know, got a lovely cover on it and mm. they think, oh, who's this? Oh, look, it's, oh, it's got a four and a half star sticker on the front. Mm, yeah. It's like the yeah. same way I buy wine at the supermarket. <laughs> I have no idea at all, but I buy the one with the sticker on it. Thanks. Right. It's got a couple of, are those gold looking stickers? Yeah. I'll buy that. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, you get it out there and it's, and, and that's, that is, I think, kind of like half the work. You know, you write the songs and you get a group of people together. You try and get some money together. You make your album. And I think some bands go, well, that's it. Job done. Album's finished. Put it mm. in the stores. Hope for the best, you know. And I was stoked when the ship was number ten on iTunes on Friday. I was over the moon, eh? So, but it wasn't. It was only for part of the day. <laughs> yeah. So about the video, did the video? Have we got a video coming out? So the, there is a video. Uh, the video is actually on the album too. I managed to find a way to get that on the oh, CD. Oh, wow, okay. Um, video is on. As far as I'm aware, it's on Juice and um and and C4 and it's on Air New Zealand starting on December the first. Right. So um they're um they're playing it for the next few months in in, in flight. So that's a video uh the, because the video we originally were talking about little to never happened and yeah. the people are making the video their house was destroyed. They ended up back up in the UK. Eventually they came back here in in, in September. And um so so even though the feelers are in power for the next three years, there yeah. there is still um, <laughs> other good, good music out there, right? Really like the feelers. Hey, do you guys want a tour support? <laughs> Hey, I'm going to play. Um, I'm going to play Drive By before we run out of time, and but and, and then and then we're going to give away some albums, yeah. That'd be great. All right, here's Drive By. Standing by, standing by, a slight uh, mishap there. Drive By now. Here we go. <laughs> 